Hey guys, how are you? Welcome, my name is Mark Eskenazi with ME Corals. And today we want to take a look at my tank and just do a tank review. Uh, let me start about uh, this tank and, and how it was formed. I had a tank in a prior home. This tank or this home was built about 12 years ago. When we built the home, we in essence built the tank uh, in the home. As you can see, it's, it's the same cabinetry that's throughout the house and it's built in. Also, we built in the return pump and the chiller, which are outside. That is, the plumbing lines run down into the slab and run out to the side of the house where the pool equipment is. What makes my tank a little bit differently is it's old school and that it's still an SPS tank, or not an SPS tank, but a metal halide tank, which was predominantly used for SPS uh, way back when. A lot of people have switched to LEDs and T5s. This is still old school from that perspective that it's uh, an metal halide. There's three 400 watt metal halide bulbs in this system. Uh, they're the Radeon uh, 20Ks, which is what seems to be the preferred bulbs. What you also see differently in this system is the aquascape, or the way the rock is placed in the tank. Because it's a peninsula tank, and you can see from all three sides, the rock is also old rock that's been around for a long time. And the rock is Tonga branch. Uh, the branches you can see, you can see through the rock, you can see through the tank, and that was by design because it's a three-sided tank. Uh, we didn't want to obstruct the view. We wanted the ability to see through the tank to the other side. And as you take a look at the tank, you'll get a feel for that. That's what makes it different. All of us need to maintain calcium and alkalinity, and I do that through the, uh, the use of two-part. I also dose magnesium on a manual basis about once a month. Uh, I don't feel that's something that needs to be dosed. That's something that based on test kit I can hit pretty hard once a month and uh, maintain them at the appropriate levels or you could do it when you do your water changes. Um, let me say that I still run calc. Uh, calc has its benefits. It reduces phosphates, helps elevate the pH a little bit, and at the same time it provides a little bit of calcium and alkalinity, uh, but does not replace too much. Yeah. The flow in the tank is generated by the pump. The pump outside is a hammerhead, a reflow hammerhead pump. It's a big pump, 5,000 or so gallons per hour, but remember it's pushing across the house through the slab and back through two inch pipes. Inside the tank, uh, I don't have the fancy uh, uh, MP40s or whatever that everybody's using because I don't want to see the back side of a pump. What you'll see behind us though is I have a closed loop. And the closed loop brings in water through these pipes up here, up by the return, and in turn blows them out through the bottom of the tank where there's four return holes blowing the water back up the tank. But that was a way to obstruct or not obstruct the visibility with having pumps visible in the tank. The tank is a six foot by two foot by 33 inch tank. I'm guesstimating it's somewhere between 230 to 250 gallons. Uh, the sum's another 30 or 40 gallons. In the sump, obviously I've got a skimmer. It's still a 10 to 15 year old skimmer. Don't know what it's called, but it's a big skimmer and I run an, um, a Danner MP nine and a half on it. So it gives it plenty of flow. It's a standard Venturi pump. Uh, but the key to skimmer, I believe, is changing the juice out every three or four days. Um, a lot of people think that they can leave it for a couple of weeks. I find that it's just more efficient pulling and cleaning. Okay, another thing I'd, I'd like to share with you is the fish that are in the tank. I think it's important that everybody uh, maintain some fish in their tank. A fishless tank does not provide enough nutrients to the system and there's some value in fish. I, I'm especially fond of wrasses. I keep as many as I can in a tank which without them fighting. But the wrasses can eat flatworms, can eat red bugs, can eat other stuff. Uh, I never seem to have problems with any type of bugs. Uh, I think it's because of my rashes. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, I, I think it's important that you maintain a level of fish load that your system can process. If you have too much fish, you'll end up with too much nitrates and phosphates. If you have too little fish, you won't have enough nutrients in the water. So it's a constant balance based upon the filtration of your system. And it ages, it changes. That is, your filtration system gets better. So my tank used to be and I used to pride myself on being a predominantly SPS tank. Uh, I still am an aquaculture facility, and when I was doing that more aggressively as opposed to chemicals, it was SPS that I did predominantly. And as you can see from the tank, the real estate at the top, closer to the sunlight, is SPS dominant. And I still is my favorite corals. But down towards the sand bed, you'll see I love chalices, I love Montes, and there's a lot of other soft corals in there. A tank with a mixed breed seems to be a little bit better, gives a little bit more flow, a little bit more ability. The answer is just to use your real estate appropriately 
and the high light stuff is for your SPS, the lower light stuff or the mid, mid stuff could be for your softies and your zoas and everything else. Another thing, guys, that I do that might be a little bit differently from other people is I dose vinegar. Uh, I thank Randy Farley, who's uh, written a lot of articles on the importance of vinegar dosing and carbon dosing. Uh, I've been doing it for many years. Many years prior to that, I used to dose vodka. Uh, I found that vodka produced a lot of cyanobacteria. We all, when I say we all, Randy and all those that were on the thread many years ago, switched to vinegar and found that dosing vinegar was a better alternative than vodka. We got less cyano. Uh, probably was cheaper, a gallon of vinegar cost about $2.50. Um, and it's done very well for me at reducing nitrates and phosphates. And it's real simple, if your bacteria in your tank is able to grow, double, triple, quadruple, it has the ability to consume nitrates and phosphates. And that's the purpose of dosing a carbon source. A uh, carbon source also can be viewed as your bio pellets. Some people use that. Uh, I find the vinegar simpler for me. I also dose amino acids. I put the amino acids in my vinegar, that is the M-E amino, me amino, um, in with my vinegar, it's dosed. The purpose of that is not only to dose carbon, but to dose a nitrate source. As I try to reduce my phosphates to low levels, I want I, nitrates end up going too low, so I want to dose protein that's easily absorbed by the coral, which is the M-E amino, and that in turn helps my corals get prettier and grow faster. Anyways, I run my system on an apex, and the uh, the apex will actually turn on my lights. I do a little light show for you, but I don't think you want to see it. I can turn on my lights, especially with, during the day, and I, everything I can control wirelessly from my phone. I think apex has done a great job. Uh, somebody said to me, Mark, what do you have for tips? And everybody's heard the word stability. No, that's not a product somebody makes. Maybe it is, but that's not what I'm talking about. Stability is keeping your alkalinity without huge fluctuations. I find alkalinity is the key to an aquarium. Um, I find people have a hard time measuring, testing, uh, alkalinity. I find they let alkalinity swing from one end to the other. Once people set up a dosing system and they can keep their alkalinity stable at whatever number they think is appropriate, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I'm not sure it matters. I shoot for 9 or so. Um, but the key is stability. The second thing I shoot for and I think is most important in your tank, by the way, as we talk uh, alkalinity, obviously that means calcium and magnesium, but they fall into place easier once you work on alkalinity. Then the second one is what I call the nutrient cycle in your tank. You have to make sure that your system is matched. That is, the nutrient flow that you put in the tank through food or other substances that you add to the tank is being processed by your tank and not being abundant so much that your nitrates and phosphates rise. So again, you need to make sure that you feed inappropriate to what your system can digest and hence your fish load must match that, that system. With that, folks, I want to say welcome to spending some time here at the home of ME Coral. I hope you enjoy my tank. Again, everybody's tank's a little bit different. I do mine because it suits me in this manner. I love to see other people's tanks, as you have enjoyed seeing mine. So let me see your tanks and tell me all about it.